Hey guys and welcome to another video. In this video I'm going to show you how to connect your PSI camera to Hapdash Node.js and make a HomeKit camera. So first you want to make sure Hapdash Node.js is installed. The next command you want to run is wget goo.gl slash d capital e x 8 m capital y and click enter. This downloads the script. And there you can see the script went through. So to make sure it downloaded the right script, make sure uh, it just says connecting to raw.github. That means that uh, it is downloading from GitHub and it's not an other file. And so the next command you wanna run is sudo shd capital E X eight M capital Y. And this is the automatic installation script. So once you hit enter, it'll start an automatic installation. I'm gonna skip through this, but it should take about 10 to 15 minutes. Okay, so now we can see that the script is completely done and uh, you're back to a command line. So we're just gonna make sure the script ran through. So go to the hap-node.js directory, run the ls command and make sure you see a file that's green and says task. That means that um, the script should have gone through properly. And so now we're gonna go to part two of this installation. Okay, so now we're gonna get the IP address of the Raspberry Pi. Just run the command IP ADDR and you'll see all of this come up. So uh, ignore most of the things, but uh, if you're on Ethernet, you want to look for ETH0, and if you're on Wi-Fi, it'll be WLAN0, but you want to look for the INET and then 10. Dot or whatever your IP address is. You should be able to figure it out, and you want to make sure you write this down for the next step of the tutorial. Okay, so now I'll be setting up the web portion of the software. This is required for the streaming. So the first thing you want to do in the browser is enter the IP address of your Raspberry Pi, and then 8765, and click Enter. And so you'll be greeted by this interface. This is called MotionEye. And so uh, the username is admin. There is no password by default, so you can just click enter. And here you'll be greeted by this message which says you have not configured any uh, cameras yet. Just click on it. And uh, here, if you have your PSI plugged in, it should automatically pop up. And uh, it'll say local camera and then USB camera. Just click OK. Give it a few seconds to load. And so now you're going to see this part, and um, you can see there's a live stream of the camera there. Uh, so here, now we can start editing the settings. So uh, you can rename the camera. So for my instance, it'll be bedroom. And also, we can go through other settings, but you can see there's not many settings. So we have to turn on advanced settings. You can see that toggle, turn it on, and you can see there's a lot more stuff that popped through. So once you click advanced settings, click apply. And so now you can actually customize a bit of uh, motion eye. So you, if you can scroll down, uh, you'll see video resolution. The Raspberry Pi is pretty powerful. So of course you can set it to uh, 640 by 480. And uh, I click apply once again, so the camera can update its configuration. Once you did that, you can see there is a higher resolution now and the picture does look a lot clearer. And uh, you can change the frame rate. Uh, this is really depending on the Raspberry Pi, what the maximum frame rate is. I'm using a Raspberry Pi 2, so it can do about 15 frames per second. But uh, something like a Raspberry Pi 0, my limits were about only, uh, I, I would say about seven frames. But I know Raspberry Pi 3s can almost hit 20 to 30 frames per second with uh, without many issues. So in my instance, uh, I'm just gonna put it at 15 and you can if you give it a few seconds. You can see the camera streaming at 15 frames per second. And so if I go to something like 30, if you have a Raspberry Pi 3, you can try this. Um, this is my first time, so let's see if the Raspberry Pi does it. Yeah, it just doesn't seem to want to go over more than 15. It's going, touching 23, but uh, the Raspberry Pi is going to have a heavy CPU load. So the best uh, use scenario is just put it at 15 if you have a Raspberry Pi 2. I'd keep it at 5 if you have a Raspberry Pi 1 and 7 if you have a Raspberry Pi 0. And so streaming rate, uh, make sure it's just the same as what your frame rate is. And I set my streaming quality to 75%. Yeah. 
Now, if you turn on motion optimization, it's going to drop your frame rate, but it'll make sure the Raspberry Pi is in under heavy load. If you guys want to like, ensure the lowest power usage, you guys can turn on motion optimization. It shouldn't make a big difference, but you can see that it's a very low frame rate. So usually I just turn off motion optimization. And if you click apply, you'll see it goes back to its regular frame rate. And there you can see it's back to its uh, 15 frames per second. And uh, yeah, so let's keep going through. And yeah, so if we scroll down, you can see there's more options such as motion detection, motion notifications. I'm making a tutorial for IFTTT notifications. So yeah, you guys can customize this however you like. Uh, there, this is a pretty popular software. So yeah, customize this however you like. Make sure you click apply once you're done. And uh, yeah, let's move on to the next part of this tutorial. Okay, so now we're going to make sure we're in the hap-node.js directory again. So if you're already there, don't need to worry about it, but you might want to run this command again. And okay, so now I've made sure I'm in the hap-node.js directory. And so unlike bridged core or core for the other accessories, we need to use camera core for this. So the command you want to run is sudo nano camera core.js. We're going to edit a few parameters in this file, basically customize the thing and click enter. And so here you can see we're now in cameracore.js and you want to scroll down to the line which is var camera accessory. It's one of the first few lines that shouldn't be that hard to find. But here you can name your camera and etc. So here it says new accessory and then in the uh, and then in the uh, parentheses you can see it says node camera. And so here I'm going to rename mine to bedroom camera. Yep. And then for UUID generate um, you want to rename that as well, so I'm going to rename that to Bedroom Camera as well. Yep, there we go. Yeah, no, no need for space there. Uh, yeah, so you guys can customize the name to whatever you want. And then in the next part you have to do is you have to change the uh, Mac ID of the username. So this is basically a Mac ID, so you can change it to whatever you want. So in my case, I'm just doing ABCDEF and then uh, 543210 but uh, yeah make sure it looks like a valid ID if most people they're just gonna change one or two characters I would just change one of the letters to a number and uh, that should be fine so once you're done make sure you have everything the way you like it and uh, just hit control X uh, cl uh, click the letter Y and then click enter yep and um, that should save the file so now we're gonna get in, we can start the node sudo node camera core dot js click enter and so now you can see hap dash node js is starting if there's no errors we can uh, move to the next part of the tutorial where we pair it okay so now we're on my iphone so the first app you want to open is home and so here you can see you want to add an accessory so i'm using a new home and so as soon as you click add accessory you should see bedroom camera you want to click on that and click add anyway and click enter code and then you want to enter the code 03145154 this is the default pairing code give it a few seconds if you're on a raspberry pi zero it does take a bit of time but yeah so once you're seeing this uh just select the room you want and click done and so now you can see the camera has shown up so here it gives you a snapshot so about every 15 to 20 seconds it gives you a new snapshot so uh, or every time you open the home app so uh, yeah so that's a pretty cool feature about this and if you click the snapshot it takes you to the live stream and there you can see there's the live stream unfortunately there's no audio controls or microphone or anything like that I need to work on that but I think we should be able to get that work in the future update so yeah that's the pairing part of the tutorial okay so now we're gonna do the final touches on the Raspberry Pi so you want to stop the node with control C then you want to run this command sudo Raspi config. You want to click enter. And so you want to scroll down to uh, advanced options. Click enter. And go to memory split and again click enter. And here uh, I have a chart there. So uh, whichever Raspberry Pi you have, uh, you can put the corresponding amount. Click OK. Click finish. And uh, say no to reboot because we still have some more configuration to do. And the next command you want to run is sudo nano 
slash etc slash rc dot local and click enter yeah, so make sure that's the exact command and so here you can see the script um, you want to scroll down to um, the line just before oops yeah let me scroll down again you want to scroll down right before the line which is exit zero you can see that blank line in that blank line you want to run enter this command sudo forever start and then you want to do slash home slash pi slash hap dash node.js make sure your case is correct and then slash camera core dot js and uh, make sure you have this exact command make sure all the capitals everything are the same then uh, once you, uh, you know everything's good make sure that line is also before exit zero like I said before that's pretty crucial you want to do control X Y and click enter so after you do that you want to go back into raspi config yet once again so run the command once again sudo raspi dash config and uh, you want to scroll down to boot options or oh, I'm sorry wait for network at boot number four and you want to click yes for this and then give it a second and there you can see it says it's enabled you, you just want to click finish and the next command you want to run is sudo reboot this is the final command once you click enter everything is done thanks for watching guys if you have any questions leave it in the comments mm -hmm.